Josh, you, uh, you had the hard task of having to go in um, and film a scene with, with Larry uh, after he passed, and something happened that you couldn't quite understand. Tell me about that. Tell us about that. <clears throat> um, I think it was, it was a few days after he'd passed away, and uh, we were having a, uh, just a moment uh, for a day together with the crew and the cast, uh, just you know, telling stories about, about Larry and uh, just kind of you know, paying tribute to him. And I had, t I had the tough task of right after that having to go in and film a, te a, a telephone conversation with Larry. And um, <laughs> we, uh, it, I didn't know how I was gonna react to it and they had already, you know, it was, it was, they did the movie magic and cut his voice in and I was literally talking to him on the phone and, and, and I was trying to not lose it just because it was an emotional day in general. And each take, a broom would fall over, uh, <laughs> you know, a train would pass the studio, like something, it was literally, I was literally going, okay, Larry, you know what, thank you for helping get through the scene, and, <laughs> and, and literally, the, the most random things were happening that never happened on our stage, and I just knew that Larry was playing a joke on me like he always does every day. Uh -huh. <laughs> And, and, and Brenda, I wanted you to tell a story. Um, you did some amazing, amazing work when Anne was in the stand, uh, defending her, her life, her reputation. And um, that was, was that Larry's final work that he did? It was. Um, the last time I worked with him was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And um, he, he was part of the audience member. And you know, um, when you're doing a serious scene, like Patrick, he's always the first one to crack a joke, an off-color joke, so that everyone laughs to relieve the tension. And so I did this entire monologue that Cynthia and her staff writers had written that was stunning and emotional. And the audience actually organically just kind of applause, you know, after we yeah. cut. And then it got really quiet and Larry goes, well, I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but he wasn't saying it to anyone but himself, but it yeah. just cracked everyone yeah. out because, you know, that was, he was just so authentic. And I know I'm putting you on the spot, but there was another story where uh, you were, I guess you were, you were in London and, and, and Patrick and, and Linda and Larry were in a limo and he did something very sweet. Do you remember? I think it was London. Was it was it? in London, but I don't think we were in a limo. Okay. I think well, we he... were in the lobby okay, of the hotel. Yeah. Tell and me there was what... this really spectacular chandelier in this lobby. And it was made up of all these individual white lights with one single red light. And we had all just gone out in our separate ways and come back and we were all kind of convening and, and having after hours. And, and I was eating dinner and I had to go to the bathroom and I was walking through the lobby and he's like, Brenda, Brenda, come here, I've got to show you something. So he's like, Larry, I have to pee. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, it'll just take a second. So of course it's Mr. Hagman. So I just said, okay. So he said, look at this light. Isn't this extraordinary? I said, yeah, it's a beautiful chandelier. He goes, now look down at the mirrored table. And there was this mirrored table under the light and you could see all of the lights above in it. And he said, now look up, now look down, now look up, <laughs> now look down. And I'm getting like a head rush and I finally, he goes, do you see that? And I said, yeah, Larry, it's the universe. Uh. It's like the stuff we're made of. And he said, yes, yes. Pat Patrick, we, we, we knew Larry as Major Nelson, we knew him as J.R. Ewing, but there was this whole deep spiritual side to him. What do you want to say about that? What should we know about that side of him? Well, I don't, I don't think Larry would consider himself deep and spiritual. Okay. And, and the reason I say that it is not because he wasn't deep and spiritual, but he felt that was normal. And he felt, I think he felt everybody was deep and spiritual. They just didn't know it all the time. Uh, he, would, he would take us all uh, on, on these random little excursions into the inside of his brain, you know, <laughs> which can be a scary journey. <laughs> you know, but it, it was like Brenda's story or any of these other stories is he, he was such an observer of the world in, in a very uncomplicated way that I think everybody thought he was even more profound than he was. All he was was very aware. He was just constantly aware of everything all the time. And that's a very refreshing way to observe somebody going through life because there's no agenda, there's no duplicity, there's no, uh, he's not trying to work a room or do anything. He's just being Larry and he's interested in everything that comes within his realm of being. Mm. And, uh, you know, and if that's deep and profound and, and, and religious, then, then that's your definition of who he was. He was just a, a guy who was always right there. And here. <laughs>